Yeah, this is Logan Muffles with the Landmark Implement, Lexington, Nebraska. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go through uh, some AMS guidance features, uh, and then as well as Rosense and AutoTrack Vision. I'm going to kind of talk through all that in this video. So here's your basic 2630 page. Here's a pretty basic layout that you might see. You'll notice over here we have a set track. That's where we're going to go set our AB line or our guidance. So if we hit set track zero, you'll notice a current track. So maybe we already have a current track that we could select. If not, we can go ahead and select new, name that track. And then once we name that track, we can uh, go ahead and set an A point and add one end of the field, drive the whole length of the field, and then hit a set B track. As well as in this page, we can change our track spacing if need to be, or our method for our track. So we can do an A plus heading, lat longitude, auto B, or in lat longitude plus heading. I just wanted to point them things out real quick. Pretty basic, that's how it's done. Next, I want you to notice the pie here in the book with our inch. So we need three pieces of pie. Then when you hit resume, we get the fourth piece of pie. Uh, if we ever don't have three pieces of pie, we're not going to be able to auto track. And typically you'll get a book with our inch here. And this helps my department when you call in, if you can go into this book by just clicking on it and you're going to view auto track. So there it's going to tell you some diagnostic features here, whether you have a steering controller capabilities and you have an auto track license, you know, do you have GPS valid, do you have a correction? We'll kind of walk you through this. Um, make sure that you have a tracking mode selected. And a big one here is free of steering trouble codes. We want to make sure that that's a yes, because if we have trouble codes, uh, we're definitely not going to be able to auto track. So it's a good diagnostic page. You can use as well as us if you're not getting all of your pieces of pie. Another thing I was just going to go into here. So if we go to main menu, letter D, GS3, Green Star, we have a guidance tab, letter B. So under guidance, we always want to make sure that, you know, if we're experiencing some steering issues, that our steer sensitivity uh, maybe has got changed. I believe default on a sprayer is 70. As the sprayer gets some wire, or maybe when it's real new, we might have to adjust that number. So if we don't think we're getting to respond fast enough, maybe we up it to 100 and try that. Before you change any of these numbers, make sure you take a picture or to record that number. So if we make the issue worse, we can go back. So up here in the second tab under this guidance page, guidance settings, we have some auto track advanced settings. So if we're experiencing maybe some messing and what have it, uh, you're just not happy with the performance of your auto track, we can come in here. First thing you might want to do is again take a picture of your one and two page here and then go ahead and restore back to default settings. Once we've re restored them to default, if we feel like the issue is still not better or if it's gotten worse, we need to go ahead and change them numbers back uh, to how you previously had them set and then maybe fine tune adjust maybe a line sensitivity or what you think would best fit the issue you have. If you have questions about what each of them do, we have a question mark down here in the bottom. That'll walk you through and tell you what each of them sensitivities you're changing. So it's good if you're unsure to go ahead and read this and always just change one at a time. I'll go back a page. Like we don't want to make changes to both of these because we want to do it one at a time so we know if we're actually making a difference. So once we're happy there, we'll go ahead and hit accept. Again, just wanted to point that out. That's a big one on sprayers that you might need to go in there and fine tune, especially as the sprayers get older. Uh, the last thing I was going to just touch on here real quick is how to get to your receiver and walk through a TCM calibration. So we're on our main homepage. We go to the bottom right to the main menu, find the Starfire 3000 or 6000 receiver, click on that. So when it loads up here, we're going to see the info page first under letter F of the receiver. It's going to tell you your position mode, SF2, SF1, RTK, SF3, tell you your Latin longitude, roll angle, roll pitch, yaw rate, a uh, big thing here is your accuracy, GPS signal, and your satellite signals. Uh, main thing I want to talk about in this is the second tab over on top is called setup. This is where we're going to have to go if we need to do a TCM calibration. Uh, this is always where I start if you have a guest row issue or you're maybe experiencing some auto track issues. Uh, we do need to do a TCM calibration every time we move the receiver from machine to machine. So again on this page you'll see a correction type. If you want to switch to RTK, we would click here, 
Van or TK, it'd be located there. At the bottom of the page, you're gonna see this height. Uh, we wanna make sure that we measure that, and that's from the ground to the base of the receiver. I believe 120 is pretty close. Wouldn't hurt to actually measure that. Uh, if you're experiencing issues where auto tracks constantly keeps kicking out uh, in hilly terrain, we might need to drop that down to like 60 and see if that'll help fix that problem. As far as mounting direction, we always want to make sure that's forward because the receiver's going to be facing forward. And lastly here, I was going to talk about uh, TCM calibration. Pretty simple deal. Just click on the cow button, park your vehicle on a flat surface, mark your reference line through a fixed axle. So on your sprayer, find a spot that is going to be center of the sprayer, mark it with a flag or a pole. And once you go ahead and have that spot marked out, you hit accept. It's going to calibrate. So once it's calibrated, we go ahead and turn around, uh, go ahead and drive the sprayer forward, turn around 180 degrees come back on the same wheel tracks, line up on that same reference point in the center of the cab, and hit accept again. That's all there is to calibrating it. If you have a 6,000 receiver, you may, uh, instead of just doing a 180 degree turnaround, you might actually have to do a figure eight pattern on that turnaround. Uh, over to the right here, we have our tripod. Uh, this is how we configure to a different RTK base station. So if we were gonna configure that, we'd turn the vehicle, and then we would select the channel and the network ID and hit accept. And then it'll tell you your status is okay, satellite corrections, your location number, which should be your channel, uh, how many distance you are from the base, uh, tell you things like that. So again, that's how you configure to a different base station tower. Uh, we have a landmark app that shows you which base station you're closest to. I'd recommend downloading the landmark implement app and on the bottom there's a tab for RTK. The last thing I want to talk touch on a little bit is letter I, the book with the wrench. This gives a reading page and it will tell you the software version. We do need to be at 2.80 with what's coming in February with the satellite changes. Um, if you're not 2.80 you either need to update that yourself or contact uh, your local CTS to update that. I'm going to talk about auto track vision and auto track row sense on this PowerPoint. Uh, I wanted to point out in this first slide the pictures of the component. So this is your auto track vision camera, and over here we have our auto track row sense field one. We're going to talk about auto track vision first. For auto track vision system requirements, we must have a Starfire 3000 or 6000 receiver. It's capable of working with SF1, SF2, SF3, or RTK. We need a Gen 4 or Gen 3 display. You must have the auto track activation, row sense activation or subscription. We need to make sure we're current software on both our receiver display and our RG3 controller, which controls the camera. And we must have the auto track vision camera as well. We need the RG3 controller unit and harnessing. And we're just a brief outline of what we're going to need to be able to run that system. Auto track vision, it's tested in corn, soybeans, and cotton. It's rated up 17 mile an hour, 20 to 40 inch row spacing compatible for any of that. It's most optimal to use in the six inches to 90% canopy. So kind of a full season solution here. The theory of auto track vision, it detects variation in color. So it's detecting the ground being brown and the crop being green. It communicates from a CAN bus to the row guidance controller, which is what we call the RG3 controller. And it's calibrated by the user by defined non-target crop. So we have the row guidance controller re receives battery voltage from Fuse F1 and it communicates on the CAN bus 2 to the existing auto track system. Auto track vision and auto track row sense, vision guidance, it has a monocular camera. It's ideal for early season row crops, post emergent applications, whereas the row sense guidance that we'll talk about later is a universal row sense feeler. Works a lot like a combine head with the feeler ones on the snoots. Uh, this is down along the tires and it is more of a late season application. So this first slide here, uh, we're going to kind of get into the, the auto track vision. Over here is your 2630. This is what you're going to see as an icon on your page for the vision. You have to be in camera input too. And then you're going to see the icons going down the screen as well as a visual of what the camera is seeing. The top icon here, the camera looking thing, we have a scale of a 0 to 10. Uh, we must have a confidence of 7. Less than that is not acceptable for vision guidance. Again, we, we want to make sure that we're in yellow and green, ideally green at all times. 
with our confidence level. The next one down is our TCM roll reading. So this is kind of pertaining to your TCM calibration, and that's why it's important that we do a TCM calibration. It provides slope feedback to the system from the GPS receiver TCM. It scales it in degrees, green icon zero to two, yellow icon two to six, and red icon is six or more. 6.9 or greater slope results in diminished functionality. Basically it won't work. And really I would say it's probably closer to five when it stops working. We really want to stay in that green to yellow icon for sure. And as far as your setup page, there's four camera inputs. We always want to make sure that we're on camera two. That is what's going to be the camera input that we need for row sense, or for the vision, excuse me there. So here's kind of your first, your screen. Uh, and I would recommend setting up a page in your layout manager that looks similar to this. By doing that, you'd hit your main menu, layout manager, and then customize a page that looks like this. So you put your row guidance up here, your video selector down here, and then a guidance map over on the right here to look just like I have here. So then at top, you're gonna have setup, camera calibration, and diagnostics. The second page of setup is the sensor shift. So as we're going, we feel like we're to the right, we could shift over to the left. As far as the diagnostics page for vision, it's gonna take you in, tell you if the system's enabled, which sensor selection we have. So we have vision, is the camera available? Yes. If we have the activation and the confidence value. And then page two of that, it's going to let you know if it's calibrated, when the last time it was calibrated, the primary source, and if we have a row error. From there, we come back to this, the main page, and we hit on camera calibration. This is the most important part of the auto track vision. Every time, initially when we get the camera, we have to do a camera calibration. Anytime we change fields, I would recommend doing this calibration. If we change row spacing or uh, crop type, I would for sure recommend doing this calibration. And you'll notice as the day goes on with the different shading effects, uh, you might get one field down, get to the next one, it still works, and maybe you get to that third field and it seems way off with the way the shading has moved across the day. You might have to recalibrate for that as well. It's a really short and fast process. It is seven steps. I'm gonna walk you through that. So step one here, uh, drive the vehicle into a crop row where standing crop exists. Align the vehicle parallel to the row crops and be sure to center the wheels in the middle of the rows. Yeah, and make sure you do not back up during the calibration. Step two, we want to make sure that we have the proper camera height. So we need to measure to the ground, to the center of the camera lens, and enter that value in there, as well as the current row spacing we're going to be running on. So again, if we've been running 30, and switch to 36 inch row spacing, we have to redo this camera calibration. So step three, which I don't have a picture of, is just a processing. It's processing the camera height and row spacing that we told it. And then step four, step four is kind of on you. We want to center these points on the row as close to center as we can. So we can move point one and point two. So it labels out here, we want to center that on the row as best we can. We hit the next which is number five. Five is just a processing. It's processing that row that we told it where center is. And then we have step six here, drive forward down the exact center of the row crop row in a straight line. And step seven, it will complete itself after about a hundred feet and you're done with the calibration. So from there, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about like what the icon over here means. It's gray right now, but that is an indicator. So that's a status icon. So if it's gray, as we've seen in that last picture, all components installed, sensor enabled. If it's yellow, row sensor data only. If it's orange, we have auto track AB line data only. And if it's uh, green, we have vision sensor and auto track AB line data. So typically we want to see the green line if we're actually in good standing crop and we're ut utilizing the camera. From there, we're gonna jump in and talk about the row sense. Wands a little bit. Here's a picture of them. A uh, nice little wand here. They run on both tires and they're just filling the base of that stock by a sensor voltage to help steer. So the theory of, theory of the operation, row sense, two sensors, one on each front wheel module, provides feedback to the RG3 control unit. There's no calibration for this one. The sensors operate from 0.5 the 4.5 volts. Again, we need that row guidance controller and it receives battery voltage 
communicates on the CAN bus 2 controller and feeds back to the main auto track controller. Supported up to 20 miles an hour and it's actually supported between 30 and 40 inch row spacing. I got a quick picture of it here. Uh, you'll notice that we have set up camera calibration is grayed out because we can't calibrate this and we have a diagnostics page. You would watch your lines as you're going and you could see how them ones when they are filling, getting voltage readings that line would move uh, if it's sensed that it needed to move. So on our row guidance setup page we'd want to actually se select row sense here. We'd want to enable the system and we can select either GPS steer which you would hit resume once and GPS would steer you into the row or we could hit this bu button and actually manually steer in the row and then just hit our resume button once to engage our feeler once. So the next next thing that I was going to show here is the diagnostic page. Uh, number two is the main one that you're ever going to look at and it'll tell you the voltage. So we got our left center voltage and our right center voltage and then read from zero to five volts. Best way to check them is have someone stand below the machine and push them one way or another and make sure that voltages increase. We have the same status icon for this as well. When that's gray, it just means that all components are installed. We just haven't enabled them yet. When we see yellow, it means sensor data only. That means the filler ones are running and that's the only source we had lost GPS at that point. If it's orange, we're currently just running off the auto track AB line. And if it is green, we are running with row sense and an AB line. The last page here, I just, it's kind of a quick feature uh, that you might want to check if maybe you're, it's not turning on for you, it won't let you enable. We need to come into the main menu, GS3 tab, and then our guidance. And then under guidance setting, we have a row sense setting. And that's where we turn that master on and off to actually be able to run this feature. I did want to touch too, one thing that you need to check if we're ever having an issue with our filler ones, they don't seem like they're working correctly. We need to make sure there's no mud and debris in between this filler one. And this filler one also adjusts up uh, center here like it is now, and we can actually tip that down on shorter season so we're not hitting the stock as much. So just wanted to point them things out there. Uh, we can also run this system. Uh, instead of having a straight track and an AB line selected, we can just select a dashed line to run under and the filler ones will completely steer. We don't actually need an AB line selected.